Hey, it's Mike here, and today, all meat diets. We're gonna cover mainly the Joe Rogan interview with the doctor who eats only meat, but also the super recently released ASAP Science video, What If You Only Ate Meat? So it is possible to thrive on only meat, I have received some messages about this doctor, mainly because he taunts vegans on his Twitter profile, but now that he's gone on to Joe Rogan and we have a video interview of all of his claims, we can easily put them up against the research and see that not only are his claims scientifically unfounded, but that a lot of his beliefs are completely based in myth. ASAP Science jumps on that same bandwagon, and finally, we're going to look at the non-health implications of this diet and how we can not afford to adopt it as a culture. So orthopedic doctor Sean Baker has been eating a meat-only diet for about a year. So let's hear from the man himself about his meat-only diet and philosophies. And then I just started reading about these people that do this carnivore diet. There's actually a Facebook group. It's called Zeroing In On Health. There's a guy named Charles Washington. He's been doing it about 10 years. And I was just like, well, I'm, you know, I'm an athlete. I like trying this stuff. And so I said, well, I'm just going to try it for a month. And so I did it for a month. And I was like, man, I feel pretty good. But I mean, you know, balanced diet is just a friggin' cop out. I mean, it's right. like, I don't know what the f to tell you, so I'm gonna tell you to balance diet. Yep, he actually said that. But the first thing that I noticed when listening to him is that his voice is quite gravelly. Maybe he just didn't clear his throat for 20 minutes. Actually, you know, I think I just figured out his secret. Like a bird, he holds stones in his gizzard to help aid in digestion. That's the only way that he can eat this much meat and not poop blood. Speaking of blood, though. You do blood work on yourself? I haven't, you know, I haven't yet. I'm gonna probably do it once I get, you know, I'm, I'm a year at this. You haven't done any? No, I don't, you know, here's the deal, Joe. I mean, I've got a lot of people who do it all the time. I'm mm -hmm. not that interested in it because I, I just don't, I don't think it makes that big of a difference for me. I'll do it just out of, out of just to satisfy other people's curiosity. If I had to guess, he probably knows he has high cholesterol and he is a high cholesterol risk denier, so he doesn't want to show the numbers. So a radical <laughs> change in your diet where you're just consuming only meat, I would, I would want to see what kind of results I'm getting. You can tell me what blood test tells me I'm healthy, and I don't think you can. I have a video specifically how cholesterol step-by-step -step leads to artery damage and heart disease, and you can watch that, but a lot of these notions are based off industry-funded studies like those of the dairy industry and the egg industry. Totally other topics, so let's keep moving on. Now, what else might this attitude against basic, widely accepted health measurements lead to? Possibly a revoking of one's medical license. It appears that he had his New Mexico medical license taken away for failure to report adverse action taken by a healthcare entity and incompetence to practice as a licensee. Now, I don't know why this happened. Maybe he magically didn't do something that bad and got his license taken away, but it did happen, and that is worth taking into consideration. And in case you were highly doubtful like me, so I cross-referenced the information on his homepage of his website with a doctor listing with the same license number as the license revoking document. And it turns out, yes, he did practice in New Mexico and those people graduated from the same university in the same year. This is the same guy. This information matters because not only was he described as a doctor on Joe Rogan's interview, but his Twitter handle has MD in it. So be like a lawyer comes on your show and gives law advice. And then we don't talk about how he was actually disbarred. And we'll get to the sciencey stuff in a bit, but another noteworthy point on his website, you can pay him $50 a month to learn how to eat only meat and do his program or whatever. And it's totally cool to make money about things that you are passionate about. But the main point here is that him convincing you that an all meat diet is healthy is good for his business. The same thing can be said about vegans who sell products, but they have a large body of literature behind them. Do I have to say it again? Vegans have 78% lower diabetes risk, 15% lower mortality rates, 15% lower cancer risk, 60 to 75% lower hypertension, normal BMI, and not just lower heart disease risk, but clinically demonstrated reversal of heart disease. And we'll cover the meat only literature in a second, but one might say, hey, he's been doing this for a year. He looks fine. He didn't drop dead and he's an athlete, but you can, Take up smoking, smoke a pack a day for a year, and that doesn't mean you're automatically gonna die. That does not mean it's healthy. And there are plenty of athletes out there that might look amazing and then die like that 20 something year old bodybuilder that just died of a heart attack recently. But you might go one step further and say, hey Mike, on his Twitter and his website, you see these people, they've lost weight and made improvements and things like this. And my answer to that is you can take people and put them on a really crappy diet and still see improvements. You may have heard of that experiment where that teacher, to prove a lesson to his students, decided to just eat McDonald's but not over consume calories. And he had many health improvements. He lost weight, for example, and we all know that McDonald's is not healthy. Furthermore, this diet is functionally an elimination diet. Say you are reacting 
reacting to dairy, for example, something they talk about in the episode. When you eliminate that, you will no longer have that reaction, but you could be pivoting toward a trajectory of chronic illnesses, like, for example, diverticulitis, which is a fiber deficiency, essentially, where you do not have enough bulk in your stool and you create high pressure situations and rupture your gut lining and create pockets and just so many other risks of chronic diseases because the reality is that meat is unhealthy. There are bacterial endotoxins which result in inflammation. There's that NEU5GC that also contributes to inflammation and cancer. That deserves its own video. And then there's the IGF-1 boost from animal protein, which fuels every stage of cancer growth. And let's not forget the saturated fat. The general rule I see around this all meat movement is two ribeye steaks a day that are a pound each. That's two pounds of meat. And that is 62 grams of saturated fat a day. And according to the American Heart Association, the average person should be eating no more than 13 grams a day. We just blew right past that one, didn't we? And don't forget that this is a zero fiber diet and fiber is shown to be highly protective against a lot of diseases. Animal products on average have 1 64th as many antioxidants as plants do, which is not a strategy for longevity. And finally, according to the WHO, you are not just eating probable carcinogens with every meal, you're eating them for every meal. He then aggrandizes the health states of high meat populations such as the Inuit and the Maasai. I have videos that cover both of these populations. You know, just eating meat, and we know historically that there are, there are populations out there, the Inuit, the Maasai, the Sami, and all these people, you know. And the Inuit's probably the best example, right? Because they, they had an extremely low incidence of cancer and no vegetables. And ASAP Science hops on this one with the completely unsubstantiated figure of... Well, Inuit diet consisted of what was hunted and fished with little, if any, plant food, dairy products, or carbohydrates. Despite this, cardiac death rates were half that of other Americans and Canadians. And their Inuit character's heart says, I'm hella healthy. Well, let's, let's examine that. From this study, the reality is that Inuit mummies had high rates of atherosclerosis at 60%, and this is way before westernization, so you cannot pull that card. Historically, they've had abysmally low life expectancy rates and live on average about 10 years shorter than surrounding countries. And finally, let's not forget the osteoporosis, but I can eat all the meat I want. Sign me up for that diet. No incidence of cancer and no vegetables. No vegetables at all. Actually, from this study, they ate berries and seaweed and a variety of other plants. This is why I use sources, because otherwise unsubstantiated BS just piles up. So it is possible to thrive on only meat. No, these people were not thriving and they were not eating a meat only diet. Also, the Maasai had a very short life expectancy, and as this study showed, extensive atherosclerosis, which probably didn't kill them only because they were already dead of something else, or they were pumping their arteries with a very high level of activity compared to the average American. So this man is functioning off of fairy tales. High meat populations have horrendous health. In contrast, well, vegan populations, I already rattled off those statistics. Wait, your back started hurting from eating apples? He then insinuates that vegetables could be a cause of joint pain. Like, seriously, be afraid of vegetables. But I think there's something out there we're eating. I'm pretty convinced it's not meat. You know, whether it's, uh, you know, sugar, whether it's, or, or even some vegetables, potentially. And I don't, I don't even want to waste time on that. I want to spend some more time on the topic of vitamin C. And these people are not getting scurvy. And so what's happening is we know that the molecule of glucose and the molecule of vitamin C are almost identical. And so they compete for the same transporters. And so if you don't have a lot of glucose floating around, you need way, way less vitamin C. Really? Let's play along with this one. Let's say that by not eating glucose, you are able to absorb three times as much vitamin C. So the vitamin C from your meat would be tripled, and that would bring you from zero to zero. It appears that cooked muscle meat does not have vitamin C, but you know, you, you could eat some cow liver. Mmm, mmm, cow. <laughs> And wait, Charles Washington, the guy with the Facebook group that turned him onto this diet, says he eats no organ meats. So there are a few options here with Mr. Washington. Number one, he eats just enough seasoning on his meat, which is plants, to keep from getting scurvy. Number two, he says he eats some non-steak meats that his wife makes. Maybe some plant sources of vitamin C are sneaking in there. Or number three, he has low-grade scurvy. For example, here's a case of a guy who just went on a ketogenic diet. He didn't even do the all meat diet and he got scurvy. He warns, quote, 
Within about a year, I had developed scurvy. It took me an embarrassingly long time to figure out what it was. By the time I knew what it was, I had three cavities, had lost 25 pounds, had developed diverticulitis and an abnormal aorta that visibly swelled with every heartbeat and had minor skin wounds, scrapes and scratches that hadn't healed in six months. But the important question here is how many people going on this diet are getting scurvy and not even realizing it or are just too ashamed to share their experience? But really, now you'd have to eat organs to just get vitamin C, one of the most plentiful vitamins in the human diet. So much so that we lost the ability to convert vitamin C and it just didn't even matter because we ate so much. But I guess it doesn't have to be organs. It can also be raw meat as ASAP science points to. Raw meat could be the way around this. The cooking of meat degrades most of the vitamin C, but raw, thick, chewy collagen, rich skin, and blubber of whales can take in 36 milligrams of vitamin C per 100 gram serving. As if all of our top foodborne infection sources weren't already animal flesh. This is so stupid. All because these people are afraid to eat things like oranges or even a pepper. Come on. Back to the doctor's claim though, it's also unclear to what extent vitamin C is more available without glucose. We do not have any cohorts of people being studied to get these answers on a meat diet. In fact, we don't have any cohort studies on all meat diets at all. We just have a couple case studies from the 20s and 30s, two of which included the same one guy. From this one, the conclusion was basically these two dudes amazingly didn't become feeble and die over the course of the study. Their poops were described as smaller, which is exactly what causes diverticulitis over the long run. And the acidity of their urine was two to three times that of normal, which didn't cause kidney damage in the study apparently, but could create issues down the line. But again, from a starting point of eating too much standard American food, I could pick up smoking and also simultaneously lower my calories to not over consuming, and I could maybe even improve my numbers. But I have to mention on his Twitter, he refers to himself as a citizen science enabler. What is citizen science? Something tells me it's bro science. Yes, he has extensively studied Facebook groups. You know, I studied these large Facebook groups like an anthropologist, you know, like they used to study these people, you know, 100 years ago, they'd go out, you know, Weston Price would go out, you know, but so when you go on these groups and you just, what, you know, all you can do is like reading this like a scientist going, okay, this guy went on this diet and his joint went away. This guy went on this diet and his thyroid disease went away. This guy went on this diet. I'm sorry, but those are selectively shared personal anecdotes, not peer reviewed studies. I just think it's funny that people deny the reality of studies where thousands and thousands of vegans show major health improvements, but then two dudes from 100 years ago and a Facebook group is all the proof I need to go on an all meat diet. Now to the part that I haven't seen anybody else talk about on this subject, and that is how this diet affects the environment. Looking to this study, there are some simple napkin style calculations that we can do to illustrate how bad this actually is. This bar is the high meat diet, which is actually the average meat consumed in grams per day in the US. Yes, that is already over two times as carbon intensive as the vegan diet, but let's assume that the amount of emissions from meat alone is the difference between the vegetarian bar and that high meat bar. That's 7.4 pounds of CO2, which in reality is lower than it would be because people who eat meat don't just eat everything that a vegetarian eats and then more. It would cut into the vegetarian bar a little bit, but let's be conservative. Okay, let's crunch some numbers. The high meat diet is defined as greater than or equal to 100 grams of meat per day. Well, that all meat diet guideline of two 16 ounce ribeye steaks equals 900 grams of meat per day. That is 66 pounds of CO2 per per day or over 10 times that of a vegan diet in carbon equivalent emissions. To take it further, as he bragged in the video, I ate about six pounds of meat. I just put it away in one setting. You ate six pounds of meat? <laughs> That's insane, dude. That's 198 pounds of CO2. And then I'm not hungry for like 30 some hours. Yeah, fine, he didn't eat the next day. Still about 100 pounds of CO2. And I have to mention that all of that is under a model that looks at a weaker global warming potential for methane. If you look at a shorter lifespan, it can be 70 times that of carbon dioxide for methane, which is largely emitted by livestock. And also things like how respiration is not counted. Well, some have said that that could be 20% of all emissions because after all, for example, we have 1 billion 2,000 pound cows breathing 24 hours a day. 
And we don't even need to talk about the land use if we all ate nine times as much meat because there wouldn't be enough land. From this USDA report, we already use 50% of our lower 48 land to grow, feed for, and graze livestock. From this other government report, we already have 35 billion humans worth of solid waste being emitted by animal agriculture. So that and so many more reasons is why this is completely ridiculous. Now, the one shred of sympathy I have for this guy is that he, like me with a vegan diet, is promoting a diet that goes against the mainstream. But all of my sympathy completely stops there, especially when you consider what this diet does to animals. Again, we are looking at in the realm of nine times as much meat consumption as the average American, and that is nine times as much animals that you are paying for people to kill. That is not cool. There's no excuse for this, and worst of all is that he's encouraging a lot of people to adopt this diet. Now, I rarely talk from this perspective, but what dietary choices would make you a bad person if not dietary choices like this? For what appears to be mostly vanity-related reasons, you are paying to kill a massive amount of animals. And if this is about strength, I have to mention that despite representing a very small portion of the community, vegan bodybuilders and weightlifters are cleaning up from the last Olympics. The only male weightlifter from Team USA to make it was Kendrick Ferris, who is a vegan, and he set a US lifting record. And we have so many other NFL NFL players and MMA champions and the list goes on. The reality is you just do not need to eat animal corpses to be strong. And from a psychological perspective, I've noticed that this diet is accompanied by a carnivore mentality, being proud to be a carnivore. But in my opinion, this comes from a place of powerlessness in one's life. Why else would you need to prey upon these innocent victimized animals unless you're trying to raise yourself up? So if this carnivore concept appeals to you, I would ask you to look at your life and ask yourself why, and you're not gonna be able to fill whatever void you may have with dead animal corpses. In the end, from a health perspective, I urge you to not try this diet based off all of these anecdotes. There's every reason to believe that this will clog your arteries. Maybe you're doing this diet and you're seeing some short-term improvement, like a loss in water weight, or maybe you're no longer reacting to some food you were eating. Ask yourself, is that worth the long-term risks? Absolutely not. So in the end, there is no excuse to do this to the animals or the planet. Remember, we're looking at a diet that emits 10 times more carbon than a vegan diet. That is completely insane. Simply put, short of non-consensual cannibalism, this may be the worst diet in the world, and ASAP Science should be completely ashamed of painting this in any type of positive light, which it did. Finally, people should take a long, hard look at the claims of this doctor, this doctor who does not think blood work matters, who appears to have lost his medical license, makes money from this, and promotes Citizen, aka Bro Science. All right, that's it for today. In case you're wondering about the shirt, I bought it from those annoying vegans. It's House Vegans, protector of animals. I'll send a link to that below, and by popular requests, I have made my Kale Joy shirt available in a crew neck as well. All right, so thank you so much for watching. Feel free to let me know down below about your thoughts on this all-meat diet. Feel free to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.